Hi there folks, Ricky Tang here. Just thought I'd give you a kind of a long overdue catch up. It's been several weeks since my last video. Apologies for that. I think I've been suffering a little bit from the winter blues, but uh, sun's coming out more often. It's early March. I think it's the 3rd of March today, Sunday. And I just want to give you a little update, a tiny one about the bike, KTM Adventure 390, and what my next bike might be, what shape that will take. And there's a couple of shapes in consideration. So with the KTM, I've fitted a cheap pair of handlebar risers found uh, via eBay. I think they're 20 mil or 22 mil risers. And that does make it much easier now to uh, stand up if I have to. Something is winging its way to me from overseas, I think, judging by how long it's gonna to take to get to me. Got about a week to wait. And that is a Fuel X Lite. Uh, fuel controller, which is like a, I think, an ECU, ECU piggyback module. I think, generally speaking, it makes a bike run a bit richer. Hopefully a bit smoother, a bit punchier. But if I can get rid of the, the handlebar vibrations, then uh, this bike, oh, I really like uh, the, the possibility of going quite long distances on this bike. I have a suspicion and it's only a suspicion that the lean condition of this bike out of the box maybe makes the bike vibrate a bit more than it really needs to. Now, chances are that is not really the problem. The problem is I've bought a near 400cc single cylinder motorbike. <laughs> That's the problem. But I was riding for a good two and a half, three hours uh, last week. And my, my hands, both hands, went almost completely numb. To the point where I couldn't really feel the brake lever. And that's not much good. Uh, because I've got heated grips, you know, the Oxford grips, I don't really want to put an extra pair of spongy grips over the top because then I'll lose all the, um, all the heat out of the heated grips. I might end up buying a pair of Bart Busters. Well, I probably will. The first time I drop the bike off-road, and smash these plastic hand guards. <laughs> I will get some um, Bart Busters. And they, well, they don't come with extra handlebar weights, but extra handlebar weights can be purchased for them at extortionate price. And so, uh, yeah, that'll probably be the next thing for the bike. But otherwise, enjoying the hell out of it. <laughs> now, my next bike. That's an interesting one. <laughs> Well, as of a month or two ago, I wanted my next big bike to be potentially capable of going off-road. I've got a bike right here that I could do off-road. So do I need two? Probably not. Uh, so, yeah, there was recently a, a long list of, of bikes to consider next. Quite a, a variety. Well, I say that, a couple of different styles mainly. The bikes I had in mind were the Aprilia RS660, a Suzuki GSX-R750. I know. You weren't expecting that probably if you, if you know anything about me. <laughs> but part of my thinking was maybe um, what I'd like next as a bike is something that could do track days well. You know, something that's geared up for track days. And if I were to buy a second-hand GSX-R750, then I could have money to buy also another old stroke, cheaper motorbike to do long distances, touring that sort of thing. So yeah, a GSX-R was in the list. <laughs> also the BMW S1000XR. The Yamaha Tracer 9 GT Plus is up there as well. Because on paper, the GT Plus is all the bike I need. <laughs> it's got all the performance essentially you need for the road. It's got all the technology you need to keep you safe. And you can turn it down and it will entertain you as well. So I, I really like the idea of the GT Plus. It's only one slight problem. It's pug ugly. I don't like the front styling especially of the bike. 
sorry to all you GT owners no offense but yeah the way the um, the DRLs at the top and and that binnacle is is designed makes the bike look a bit pinheaded <laughs> it's not a look that I'm, I'm particularly fond of so although it's a great bike I don't really know if I want it in my shed the other bike in the uh, the long list is the new Yamaha XSR 900 GP we know that has made quite a stir in the motorcycling community and again it's got the engine it's got you know it's an XSR 900 and, I, and that's a very good bike it's a very good base like the Tracer and the Naked XSR which I have ridden but I've got to accept that it's not designed to carry luggage although you can get soft bags for it I don't think you can get much in them and the riding position is yeah for a bike I might buy as a long distance bike the ergonomics uh, are not going to be there for me I don't think a bit too sporty although I haven't sat on one yet but potentially you know that could be not my big distance bike this could be my big distance bike if I get the vibrations under control on the handlebars and then there was a wild card because you know I'm in the market for uh, for my next bike and it seems to be for the most part my head's been in charge of these uh, these bikes on this list so if I put my heart in charge for a little while I really do like the BMW R9T Urban GS now that is not really what I should be looking for for the next bike because I wanted my next bike to have a half fairing at least some sort of wind protection and basically the the uh, Urban GS hasn't got that but I love the style of the bike and I know the kind of last generation or well, two generations old now boxer engine is it's fun to ride it's not meant to be a performance bike so I think that would be that would be a good vibe basically I think I'd enjoy owning that machine now I did actually make a kind of a chart <laughs> I don't think I'll bore you with a chart uh, the word document mark them out on uh, different um, topics ie which bike are you most likely to take to a track day which bike are you most likely to take photos of in the sunset <laughs> Which bike are you most likely to take on a long trip? Which bike are you most likely to take on a short, you know, 100 mile blast on a Sunday? That sort of thing. And the bikes that kind of ended up quite high up were the uh, BMW S1000XR and the XSR 900 GP. Now, I think we could safely uh, say which one would be more popular for my YouTube channel, which, believe it or not, is something that I've been uh, thinking about it's what would be popular and to be honest with you I don't think the S1000 XR would be particularly popular at all the Tracer 9 GT Plus would probably be more popular the least popular would probably be that second hand GSXR 750 can't imagine people tuning in very very often for a 10, 12, 13 year old 750cc <laughs> Suzuki but the XSR 900GP, if I do the video making right, then I think that would uh, that would make a big difference to my channel. Basically, both those two bikes, the XSR 900GP and the uh, S1000XR, they'll both equip themselves well at a track day. But the truth is, I don't do track days all that often. Maybe, you know, two or three a year. So that shouldn't be a high up consideration, really. So on all other sensible measures, I think the XR would be the, the better choice. Having said that, if I keep the uh, 900 GP for um, track days, fun days out, and posing at bike meets, <laughs> I think it'd be a good choice. And then this bike could do the more sensible stuff, the longer distance travel stuff vibrations uh, notwithstanding and off-road so between those two bikes I'd have you know pretty much all bases covered 
I suppose one downside with, with buying a new bike is going to be, I suspect, the delivery time. I've heard some, you know, proper scare stories over the last uh, year or two about, you know, quite long lead times for bike deliveries. And I, I really have no idea how long new bikes take to get delivered now from, from the order. If anyone has been ordering bikes in the UK recently and been given a, a delivery estimate, let me know in the comments. If it turns out the delivery estimate means I lose the whole summer waiting for a, for a brand new bike, then I might just get the S1000XR because I'm going to have a hell of a time on one of those. And my plan is to find a S1000XR low suspension version and with uh, forged wheels. I'd like a little bling. Why not? It's my choice. My second hand bike. <laughs> so if I can find a fairly low mileage S1000XR with all those uh, attributes, then that'd be actually quite hard to resist. You know, I might just get that anyway. <laughs> that does sound quite delicious. I did sit on a low suspension S1000XR a few weeks ago for sale at Fraser's the Veloster. Um, didn't have forged wheels though, but I really liked the fact it was very easy to get my feet on the ground, flat footed. So the S1000XR is kind of, it looks a bit like a adventure bike, like a tall rounder. But basically it's not excessively heavy. It's got a big fairing and it's got a lot of performance. So that ticks quite a lot of boxes. Still kind of quite up in the air about uh, the next bike really. And I might think of something else next week. <laughs> it's quite possible. Yeah, so let me know what you think on the subjects of uh, this KTM and my next bike. And I'll see you down there in the comments. All right, take care of yourselves. Ta-da.